was ecstatic, Sir Topham had brought his brother, the famous Flying Scotsman, to the island of Soder. The two engines were delighted to be together again, and raced along with expresses and excursions all day. When they weren't on the main line, they were parked at the sheds together, with crowds of people swarming around to take their photographs. All the other engines were keen to meet Scotsman. They'd scan the big station and yards, eager for a chance to see him. Some were quite reserved, others were rather bold. Why haven't we ever seen you fly, then? Quiz Bill. You don't sound Scottish to me, added Ben. Donald and Douglas won't be very pleased with you. Scotsman chuckled. He was delighted to greet the others. Gordon, on the other hand, was growing tired of bothersome little engines. One morning, Toby was at the harbor on Thomas's branch line. As he arranged his trucks, he heard Gordon approaching on the main line above. Hello, Gordon, he called. Is that brother of yours still visiting? Yes, and he's far too busy and important, especially for an antique tram. Gordon gathered speed and disappeared. Toby harumphed, but had too much work of his own to stay cross. Later, Toby brought Henrietta to the junction. His passengers had hardly stepped onto the platform when he heard a frantic whistle. Thunnel came clattering in with a goods train. You needn't have rushed on my account, chuckled Toby. I've no goods for you. I'm nay concerned about the goods, huffed Donald. A photographer is taking pictures of Gordon and his brother for railway posters. But that silly engine left, Weudum. No, I'm late and puffing about like a hellish chicken. Why his passenger? A smartly dressed man stepped from the brake van, pacing as he fiddled with his camera. Toby pondered. Tell you what, he said, I have time before my next train. I'll take this man to the sheds. You get back to your work. Relieved, Donald whistled thank you before hurrying off. The photographer, tired of stuffy brake vans, was delighted with Henrietta and eagerly boarded. The guard blew the whistle and Toby trundled off. At the sheds, Sir Topham Hat was cross. I know you strive to keep to time, Gordon, but today, leaving early has ruined my arrangements. Dear, oh dear, brother, frown Scotsman, still as hasty as ever, aren't you? Gordon blushed, but before he could reply, a bell rang out through the air. Toby came puffing up. Here you are, sir, he said to the photographer, who was scrambling out of Henrietta, and your subjects are ready and waiting. Sir Topham Hatt looked at his watch. You did well to rectify the situation, Toby, but I'm afraid it's no use. Flying Scotsman's train is due out soon. Perhaps, sir, ventured Scotsman, my dear brother would be so kind as to take my train. Engines of our caliber prefer to right our wrongs. Besides, he beamed, I'd simply love to have my photograph taken with Toby. Would you? Asked Toby. I was told important engines hadn't the time for antique trams, like me. Scotsman glared at Gordon. For shame, Gordon! And in an age where more steam engines disappear from the other railway every day, no less! Toby is nothing short of a marvel, and you do well to remember that! Gordon blushed a deeper red, muttered a meek apology, and shuffled off to the station. Now come dear Toby, smiled Scotsman. I want to know all about you. Toby was flattered. As the camera flashed and clicked, he and Scotsman discussed their travels and trials. Visitors to the yard marveled at seeing such a unique combination of engines together. If you travel along the main line, and even to the other railway, you'll find posters showing a Grand Express engine and a Hummel tram engine together, smiling proudly. Toby fondly remembers his encounter with the Flying Scotsman. Gordon remembers it too. Suffice to say, Toby was never referred to as an antique from that day on.